Rangers fans, welcome. It's another edition of Bleeding Blue Shirts. John Giannone, Steve Valiquette, as we talk all things Rangers. Steve-O, we haven't really spoken in these parts since the Rangers acquired Vladimir Tarasenko. As we speak, he's played six games. He's got four points, two goals and two assists. Kind of tell us what you see from your perspective, initial thoughts of Vladimir Tarasenko, the Ranger. You know, John, I think he's been open a lot. I think that he's been in a position to score a lot. He hasn't been fed yet. But in a way, it seems to me uh, there is a learning process here about timing. And I oftentimes, when I'm watching a new player join the team, I keep all of my eyes on them and just watch them during their shift. And he's always surfing the area and waiting to appear. And I think there's been moments where he's been able to get open, he's scored a couple of times, he's got a couple of assists. We haven't seen him unlock yet, but we have seen Panarin unlock. And I think this trade was as much about Artemi Panarin as it was for Vladimir Tarasenko joining the team. I think the overall balance the lineup has right now, it's the most skill that I've ever seen in the lineup since the time that I started covering them very closely. And if you imagine that maybe the lineup shakes out with Zibanejad, Kreider, and rather than Vetrano in the playoffs, you've got Tarasenko on that line. But you can also play him with Panarin and Trocek. So, uh, you know, it's to me, it's a win-win situation. Whoever he ends up playing with full-time or the majority of the time, it's making the lineup deeper, it's making them a step faster, and it's giving them a lot more skill. And he joined a team, Steve, in the midst of what became a 10-game point streak, a seven-game winning streak. Uh, that was finally snapped with a home regulation loss against the Winnipeg Jets uh, a couple days ago. Now, when you look at that night and you assess it in the entirety of what the Rangers have accomplished recently, which is they were six ahead of the cut line in the playoff race at the All-Star break. They're now 12 ahead of the cut line, so they've certainly made inroads toward being more comfortably in a playoff position. Is the Winnipeg game a one-off, or is there maybe a little bit of uh, cause for uh, trepidation about what you saw that night? Yeah, I guess I would start by saying that it was a trap game. You're coming back from out west where you were very successful the time change being able to recalibrate it's a lot it's a trap game for a reason and for the rangers to show up and put 51 shots on connor hellebuck rather than traditionally what a trap game is like is that they don't show up at all it's a it's a team not just the rangers but it's a team in the league that has maybe 16 or 18 shots in a game they don't have the legs and at the end of the game they say look like we were beat up we were tired this wasn't us they showed up they showed up they it almost reflects to me john and we talk about this a lot and you know this is on my radar it's the low danger shots so last night they have 28 low danger shots on winnipeg when the rangers this season have been in the mid to high 20s they lose they don't win those games now we just talked about how well they've been playing recently so since the break check this out low danger chances against calgary Okay, in the previous game, they had nine. It's an OT loss. But before that, two games before that, it was 15 versus Vancouver. It's a win. They had nine low danger in that really good game against Carolina in Carolina. That was a win. And that, to me, is the recipe for the team. It's when they get seven or more high danger and 12 or fewer low danger. The reason why is the goalie just doesn't get as warmed up. In October, late October, November, when the team wasn't playing well, the shooting percentage was diving low. It was because the Rangers weren't executing on their shots, but they were taking too many low danger shots. And to me, the other team's goalie was one of the game's first three stars because he was really warm in the action. And then he was ready for the breakaway or the two on one when the Rangers did have their skill takeover. But as I continue down this quick list here, they had 12 low danger versus Seattle, which they won after the break. And in that first game against the Calgary Flames after the break, they had 13 and one. And the next game against Vancouver, 10 and one. So there's a pattern there, John, when this team is very smart with their approach. Now, back to maybe the trap game part of it, maybe mentally they weren't that sharp and they weren't making the best on their looks in the game against Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. But there certainly is a correlation between them taking too many low danger chances and the other team's goalie standing on his head. 
All right. So speaking of goalie, there's a burgeoning debate now on Twitter about Igor Shesterkin and and his season following the Vesna. He's played 41 games as we speak, so you can almost break it up into equal thirds, 14, 14, and 13. Crunching a few numbers, I've seen the save percentage in the first 14 was 916. In the second, it was 919. In this most recent 13 games, it's been 898. He's pretty much averaging three or more goals a game over the last now almost two months. Uh, is there concern in your eyes and in your mind as the Rangers head toward the playoffs now as we speak 25 games left in the regular season about where Igor Shesterkin is at right now? Yeah, definitely a concern, uh, but there's certainly going to be a solution. And you've got the best goaltending coach in the world in Benoit Lair that I'm certain and I have full confidence in Benoit to be able to help this young man get his game back on. Benny is so good at understanding how to talk to the goalie and get him mentally in the place where he is performing at his highest level. He's the best at going over video and he's the best on the ice at breaking down what's important and most importantly, helping you feel confident in your approach or confident with the shots that you face in practice because Benny knows how to build those blocks and make you feel really good about yourself. I know he's gonna find his game. I think the areas they're gonna look first, John, as far as the technical component, is how well he's tracking the pass. We broke down one of the goals in the post game from the, the third goal against the Winnipeg Jets. And part of the reason why is he's not tracking the pass. Now, in my experience, when a goalie is behind on a play, and the pass has been made and he has yet to move, it's oftentimes performance fatigue, which is mental. For whatever reason, he's phasing out during that play and he's late on the pass. Now, you almost, almost always get exposed when that shot comes because you're late and now you're reaching and scrambling to position rather than being there and set and settled on the puck. So he's late. And I, I'm pretty sure Benny is going to go through the technical component with him that way, make him understand that he is breaking down his process in a way that he needs to understand the most important part of his game is that he beats the pass and sets his feet. And if he's not doing those two things, he's not going to be able to do the most important thing he can do, which is make proper contact with the puck. All right. So it sounds like you're almost talking about a little bit of mental fatigue. So that said, is it better for him to get some more rest, especially with Yara Halak playing as well as he has to overcome some mental fatigue, which might've been contributed by going to the all-star game instead of just getting away from hockey for a couple of days, or is it best for him to play through this? You know, as we both know, working in TV, we don't always have the latitude to go as long as we want. I think we both have that problem, John. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I really felt like last night in the post game, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this because when I played with Henrik and for the better part of four years, whenever he hit a stretch like this, and I don't know if Henrik ever hit a bad stretch like this, but when he was in a stretch where he wasn't playing at his best, he would play more. I would play less. I understood my role on the team was to get Henrik going because if I helped, I knew that that was gonna help us all. And that also meant I was gonna play more because when Henrik was playing well, I got more starts. So I think the biggest part of this, and I'm sure this is still the philosophy that Benny would believe in, get him going, get him playing. He might even need John to play a stretch of seven in a row as ridiculous as that sounds with Halak playing as well as he's playing, how important is it to get him going? You might have to put a little bit of risk into this move and, and get him into seven. And, and the risk sometimes is, could it go the other way? Could there be an injury? Could there be a lot of the unknowns? I still think it's worth it because you have to get this guy going. And I think it's a string of games. Well, we'll see how the Rangers manage it coming up. Three and four days often doesn't mean goalies play all of them. And for the Rangers, it's Thursday in D Detroit, Saturday in Washington, a matinee, and then Sunday night back at the Garden against the LA Kings. It'll be fascinating, and we'll be talking all about it, right, Stevie? Good to see you as always. Thanks, buddy. Can't wait.